Hi guys, I'm uh, here again with a second time video actually. Uh, that doesn't happen to old Barry too often. And uh, really glad to be back to someone uh, I can begin now really to start calling a friend. And I uh, wanted you all to say hi again to Daryl. Hello. And uh, Daryl wanted to get on camera again uh, pretty soon. I guess he's going to be a resident in our neck of the woods. But anyway, Daryl wanted to get back on camera. And uh, last time we we did a quick interview and uh, I was most receptive to want to hear back from Daryl again. I'm glad to spend some time with him, so. Yeah, yeah, thanks Thanks for having me back. Yeah, everything's going pretty well. No complaints on my end. Yeah. You uh, now are a happy owner of a property, I guess. I am. And uh, you wanted, I guess, to describe a little bit about your feelings and since our meeting each other and yeah. things like that. Yeah, I'm very happy with the land. Uh, the property that I purchased is in a place called Loma Alta. Beautiful view, um, you know, great road access, pretty central to uh, the uh, center area of, uh, of Cabrera. Great access to beaches, you know, uh, very happy with the purchase. Uh, like I said, no complaints on my end whatsoever. Uh, as a person who probably knows more about the country than most people that I interview with, uh, out of all the country, and you've, you've covered a big part of it, uh, mm -hmm. I have. what made this area right for you? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, it's great views, uh, very relaxed environment, if that's what you're looking for. Um, you know, it just it spoke to me, you know. There's still access to, you know, amenities, supermarket, um, hardware store, uh, everything's very close by. You know, I've got access to, you know, two airports, uh, which is Las Serenas and Puerto Plata, uh, just in case I, you know, want to go ahead and catch a flight out and get back, get back, back to the States, which is where I'm from. Um, you know, uh, great access by Caribbean tours if I want to go ahead and hop on a bus ride to go back to Santo Domingo for whatever reason. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it, it worked out for me. Uh, everything lined up for the ones that I wanted. Or the ones that I that I that I have, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, that's, that pretty much well, sums you, it up. In terms of settling here, and, and when I say this, uh, folks that are subscribers and listeners and, and whatever, um, I don't favor one over the other because uh, everything's got its advantages as well as its disadvantages. But. Um, Obviously, you weren't looking for an area uh, a little bit more tourist-dominated, or you wouldn't have chosen here. No, of course not. <laughs> um, for those folks, like, do you get a different feeling when you're in our region visiting as compared to where, um, where do you spend, you spend, San Cristobal? You San spend? Cristobal. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you spend a fair, or versus, let's say, a Las Terenas or a Sisu, and I'm not saying one's better than the other. No. I'm just saying, is it? 180 degree difference? Is it a 50 degree difference? Is it? I would say that it's it's not like night and day. I wouldn't say that that I wouldn't go that that extreme with it because I mean you still are in, you still are in the Dominican Republic, and there are you know the culture hasn't really changed that much. It's more of the, in my opinion, it's more of the environment. You know, it's more of the uh, yeah, it's more of the environment. The uh, it's not it's not overcrowded over here. You know. Like I can go to Playa Diamante, I can go to Playa Entrada, Playa Boca, and and not encounter you know 50, 100 tourists you know that I've got to you know fight for a uh, you know a, a beach chair or something like that. You know I can have my privacy. I can build a fire if I want to on the beach, and not really feel you know like it's an overcrowded area. You know there's not that much traffic here, which. You know, really spoke to me. I'm not really, you know, a big fan of traffic. You know, I like to be able to <laughs> get on the road and uh, and uh, not have to, you know, fight my way through a bunch of people. You know, uh, those are those are the things that I can say that are different than a place like San Cristobal, Santo Domingo, Las Terenas, Puerto Plata, Cabarete. Uh, they're not. It's not very touristy over here, but it still has, you know. I'm better attractions, in my opinion, than most of those those other areas, uh, which is, you know, a huge uh, a huge plus for me. Now, if that stays that way, I don't really know, you know, in the future. I don't know if it'll become touristy in the future or not. Uh, but it, it's that way right now, though, for sure. 
Yeah. Cabrera, um, while we do rely some on, I, I say more of uh, winter mm -hmm. residents than yeah. tourists, mm -hmm. we do have uh, tourism, but I think I'm going to hold with my thoughts on that because it's, it's just proved true in, in, uh, in the countries that I've lived in. If we had a beach in the town of Cabrera, mm -hmm. we already would have been similar to a Cabarete, Sisua, Las Terenas, uh, you know, Boca Chica, that kind of thing. Uh, because we're a cliff town, that kind of turns off the big name, all-inclusives, and the Hyatts and the Hiltons. Now, 10 miles away, 8 miles away, that could be a different story in the future. But Cabrera, I always think, will remain, for the most part, a middle-class, upper-middle-class residential town. Um, you have a son, a young son. Uh, yes. What do you feel about um, in terms of raising a son in this environment versus the other choices? Well, uh, in my in my opinion, I mean, I think it's a great environment, especially for a city like Cabrera. I mean, um, you know, it's just you know uh, a ton of things that I like my son to uh, to experience. You know, especially in his you know early years. Um, you know, just being able to you know have fun and you know in the outdoors um, as opposed to be you know in like the center of a, of a major city you know having all the distractions of a major city in my opinion isn't really it's not worth the pain you know I'd much rather have a, a son and, and raise him you know more of a uh, not completely country lifestyle but you know have more of an outdoor uh, upbringing you know Few you know, cuts, a few bruises, instead of a couple of sore thumbs. Exactly, <laughs> ex exactly. You know, and that's that's uh, that's you know that those are the advantages that I see of, of raising a son in a city like Cabrera. You know, uh, that's just my opinion on it. Though. What about also uh, education? You uh, you have no problems with uh, homeschooling uh, versus public school and things like that? No, no, and I won't say that I'll always have him raised in Cabrera. You know, you know, if I decide to. You know, in the future, you know, 10 years down the line, you know, he's only a year old right now. But in, you know, 10 years down the line, if I decide to send him back to St. Louis to a, you know, private boarding school, you know, that's fine. Um, but, you know, in his early years of life, you know, I don't, I, I prefer him to, you know, be able to play with the kids outside and, you know, not be stuck inside playing Nintendo or whatever they, whatever they have that's out nowadays. I'm not really familiar with too much of that stuff. But, um, you know, I, I think that's just a better, better experience, you know, better upbringing for a child, uh, in my opinion, you know. As when far you visit though here, do you have a, or because uh, you're you're becoming a more frequent visitor now that you've committed to the area, mm -hmm. do you get a sense of outsider or do you get a sense of belonging? Oh yeah, I feel like I'm at home. You know, I've, you know, I love, I love the country as a whole. You know, that's just, that, that again, that's my opinion. You know, I. I I truly feel at home here. You know, there's a lot of things that really speak to me, and that's that. Again, that's my opinion. You know, but the, this country really does speak to me. You know, the people are friendly. You know, it's a warm climate. Um, I can pull over and I can ask anybody, "Hey, where is the nearest supermarket?" And they'll point me in the right direction. They won't, you know, shun me away or you know, not speak to me. You know, I but I mean the environment though, uh, versus like um, a busier, more tourist-based. Do you find the people are different in a slower environment, and, and how they react, and do are they a little more welcoming to uh, foreign people coming in? And they are, they are absolutely. You know, I feel more of a, a vibe of uh, kind of a, possibly animosity almost, in, in more of the <laughs> in the uh, tourist areas. You know, they. I don't know. I've had experiences where they tried to get over, get over on me with the, you know different bills and stuff like that. You know, in you know Las Terrenas and and uh, and different touristy areas. You know, there's two different prices. You know, I don't know if that's just me or not, but but over here I really haven't experienced that. You know, there's they're definitely more welcoming in Cabrera to the expat community. Again, that's just my experiences, but. Uh, and that's kind of what I felt to kind of, I hope I answered that question, I'm not sure if I did. Well, I, uh, I asked it for a reason being is your communication skills are, are higher than most people that, that um, I, most people want to learn Spanish and oh. it's, most don't actually because they realize once they're here they get embedded into their uh, English or French speaking friends and, and they're very comfortable because it's not a mandatory but because of the fact you've traveled the country so much and you're 
more fluent in Spanish than you give yourself credit for. I notice you always downplay yourself on that. Ah, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, no, it's pretty good. Yeah. And uh, as a person that can communicate and negotiate mm -hmm. and, and actually differentiate even by themselves using Spanish, you do you feel different here as compared to a tourist place? Yes, yes, I mean, I still do. Yeah, I mean, even though I can communicate and uh, I still very much so feel different in Cabrera. I mean, you know, it, there are things that I would say are night and day, you know, from San Cristobal or Santa Domingo to Cabrera because, I mean, it's much more of the hustle, bustle, type area in like Santa Domingo, uh, Las Serenas, Puerto Plata, Punta Cana. There's a hustle and bustle area. It's, it's, it's more of a, it's more business, I almost want to say. Cabrera is more of a community-based um, environment, if that, if that makes any sense. I'm not really sure, but... <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yeah, I mean, um, it, they're not really, it's not all business, you know, and that's, that's, that's another area. You know, that's another plus to, to, to Cabrera that I would say, you know. Well, I really appreciate you taking some time and just sharing your views. Uh, everything went really smooth with your closing. I know that was a new thing for you. And it you was. were a little bit nervous in the beginning. I was, you know, <laughs> but uh, luckily I have a great team of people. I mean, Barry's got a great team of people here. Uh, you know, they made me feel comfortable. Even though, I mean, it is a four, and, you know, that's something else I'd like to let people know, you know. Uh, I, I don't like to speak for somebody, but in my experiences with, with Barry and with um, uh, Dr. Brad Guzman, which is a great lawyer, um, don't mean to give him a plug, but, you know, I, he did do a great job with me, you know, leading me in the right direction of, you know, kind of how I wanted to set things up. Um, he made the process very smooth. Um, um, everything worked out wonderful. Um, the uh, transaction was great. No holdups on that whatsoever as far as... Uh, getting the money down to the Dominican Republic. Um, I mean, it's just a great, great team of people. Um, I could, I could, I could talk, you know, on and on about that, you know, because I know a lot of people are going to be a little leery about having uh, foreign investment because, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's not, it's not the norm. It's, uh, how can I say that? Yeah, it's just well, it's it's something new to most people. Yeah, um, you know, not uh, you. You and I have gotten to talk a little bit. Uh, we getting to know each other better off camera. But uh, I'm not sure you're aware of this, but particularly now, I am talking to American people, mm -hmm. not all Western culture. Were you aware of 0 0.03 of one percent of Americans even have a foreign bank account? Point zero three, and I'm one of them. <laughs> and, and that that's compared to Canada, which is eighteen percent, compared wow. to Europe, which is well over fifty percent, because small countries are all around in Europe. Uh -huh. But the American people are—I don't want to use the word hoodwinked, mm -hmm. but in terms of foreign assets and taking part of their portfolio and moving it into a different country for a safe bank, point zero three. Isn't that amazing? That is very amazing, you know, but it doesn't surprise me though. Yeah, yeah, but it's just a fact that I thought was relevant to, to where you were going on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do want to, again, thank you for your time on, on the second chance. Uh, Daryl, uh, I was really delighted when he said he wanted to get back on camera together. Yeah. I know he's a lot easier now that all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted. Yes, I and am. Things like that. And just looking forward to him to being a little bit more full time because I might have somebody else to bounce around the country with. Any last things you want to say before we cut the camera? Yeah, sure. Actually, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> if anybody is looking to invest in a foreign, you know, country, I mean, uh, there are differences uh, as far as uh, legalities go. But the team that Barry has, you know, from my experiences, is a great team. Uh, you know, especially the. Uh, you know, as far as the, the lawyer goes, I mean, um, he really, really did make the transaction a lot smoother than I expected. And uh, I was, you know, a little bit leery to, uh, to get into it. Um, but, you know, he explained the process. Um, fluent English speaker, you know, so you don't have to, you don't have to be uh, fluent in Spanish to invest over here. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, 
He was a great team of people. Uh, nothing but good things to say about. We him. kind of changed your mind. That kind of like the MMA way. We got him in an arm lock, and he tapped the table three times, <laughs> and we, we knew it was over. But yeah. uh, oh, and tonight, yeah, we're one of the things uh, John and I really love to do is the people we bring. Yeah, we're great. And we're okay to know and blah blah blah. But we get kind of boring after a while. What we like to do is blend them into the community, and uh, tonight we start with that, with some other cu uh, uh, couples that we've already relocated here, some that are thinking of relocating, and gosh, even uh, a well-known guy on YouTube, Mr. T, is coming up for the weekend to, to look around and join us for dinner and all that good stuff. We've become pretty good friends since uh, I did a video or two with him, and uh, I, I do want to thank you. and. I appreciate you taking the time, buddy. Uh, pleasure's all mine. Uh, thank you, man. Till next time, this is Barry and DR. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.